Hey what's up guys this is Narendra and in this video series we are going to create a view Apollo project and the server which we created in our previous video series Apollo Server Express we are going to bind those APIs here with our view application so initially when I when I wanted to create this video I was like in a quite of confusion as view 3 is also out and I wanted to go ahead with view 3 like other developers but the problem with view 3 is like we still have a lot of library support missing out from the view 3 for Apollo and I eventually ran into a lot of issues. So with that all said, I planned to create this whole series with view 2 and once view 3 is completely out with Apollo and all of the plugins support, we'll go ahead and convert our view application, the same view application with view 3 version. So first of all, I wanted to go to my GitHub repository and if you want to learn about the GraphQL thing, how we set up the simple server in the previous videos, how we created our, all, all of the functions that we, uh, that we discussed in the previous videos, if you want to go ahead and create those, those, I'll mention the link below in the description, which you can follow along and you can create your own Apollo server. Otherwise, I'll mention the link of this repository that I have and you can clone it. So I have already cloned that repository and it's Apollo Postgres. I have already named it this way and if I ls, these are the package contents of it and if I open it up in my Visual Studio code, you'll find this as the directory that we have. So here you have to configure a couple of things. For example, I created another constant that we have base URL and also the name of the database. So for my version, I will be using Docker build of Mongo image, so which is already running on port 27017. So if I said Docker ps-a and you can see already it has been mapped to my 27017 port. And with this database, I'll be connecting. But if you want to use MongoDB Atlas or something like that, you can use your custom database URL over here. And also you can configure the secret of the application and with that all set, let's go ahead and quickly spin it our server. So I'll be spinning up my server using this standard Ubuntu terminal. You can use it command prompt or git bash or even if you are on Mac or Linux, you can go ahead with the standard terminals. Whatever you are comfortable with, just go ahead with that. So to spin up a server, you, you can see we have already written our development as well as a start script. So I'm going to use a start script now because since we are no longer in our development mode, so we can use that start script. So I will simply write npm run start and this will spin it up on localhost port 4000 that we have already defined. And in my video, you may find that it is, it was running on 4000, uh, 5000, but uh, I have changed this port to 4000 and that would do the, all the job. One more thing, I would like to quickly copy the stocks folder from here because I don't want to see a lot of Visual Studio codes open while we are working only with our one pro one thing. So only this stocks things contains all sort of queries and mutations which we'll copy and then we'll use it across our view application. So with that all set, let me go ahead and quickly close this part. And you can see our application Apollo server is running on 4000. So if I go to this URL localhost 4000 slash GraphQL, you'll find this GraphQL server playground already running. For the documentation, you can file get all the post, get all post by ID, all these queries related to this application are well mentioned over here with all sorts of information and everything. And also in the schema section, you will find what are the current directive that we have created in the previous video. You will find this over here. And also all sorts of functions that are available, all sorts of mutations also available, resolvers also available. You will find everything inside this schema. So now in this mode, we are not going to work with our playground because this is our completely view series. And we are going to bind our application with Apollo client 
to our GraphQL server that we have created in the previous video series. So if you are someone like who just wanted to work with the front end, you can directly clone this repository and just go and play around with the stuff. If you want to learn with the GraphQL part on the server side also, you can go ahead, check out my playlist. I'll mention the link below in the description. With that all set, let's go ahead and start our Apollo Vue.js project. So I'm going to go to my project directory. And if I ls, I have these many projects here. So I'm going to quickly create a view project and I will check view dash dash version, which will give me the latest version of view CLI, which I have already installed in my system. That is 4.5.6. So now with that all set, let's go ahead and create our view project. So you can simply create a view project by simply saying view create and give the name of the project. So we'll simply say view Apollo or let me name it GQL. So which will give you the sense of GraphQL project. And now it will ask some questions in order to create our projects with a basic configuration, which it will provide for app our application. So that we are going to see here now. And it will ask for the preset. So I have already one preset, but for you guys, I'm going to create one so that you can create a basic setup of this thing. So I'll select this manually, select the features. And here I'm going to look for this router as well as VUX as well as SAS processors. And currently this view is in 3.x phase release version. So I'm not going to go with this thing. I'm going to go ahead with our standard 2.x. And it is asking for the use history mode for the router. So I'll go ahead with Y. And if you are comfortable with Dart SAS for the preprocessor, CSS preprocessors, you can use choose that. I'm going to go with the node SAS. If you are comfortable with less variables or the stylus, you can choose that too. And once we are done with that, now it will ask for our linters. So to set up our linters, if you are comfortable with working with Airbnb configuration or the standard configuration, or even with a prettier, anything is fine. But for the purpose of this video, we are just going to go ahead with the AS lint with error prevention mode only. And it will ask lint on save. And instead of choosing with the dedicated pack config files, I'm going to go ahead with the packet.json. You can configure lint linters by going through the documentation according to your rules, which suits you best. But I'm going to go ahead with this. And now it is asking if you want to save this for the future reference. So if you want to save this for the future reference, you can do that too. And it will ask you, for, but I already have so many configurations, presets for view application. You can simply, I'm going to simply put no. And this might take a moment in order to create a basic scaffolding of a view application. So this might take some time. So for that, I'm going to quickly pause the video and I'll be right back jumping into the code once this project is set up. So now you can see we have already this project. And if I ls here, so you will find this project in my projects directory, view GQL. So I'm going to quickly get into that. And cd view gql and if i ls this is the project content so i'm gonna quickly open this one in visual studio code that's my favorite text editor but if you do if you have any other preferences you can go with that but this is my visual studio code that i would like to work with during this project and let me quickly increase the font size so that everything looks fine and also i'm gonna spin it up in a local development environment so for that npm run serve and this will spin up this on localhost port 8080 and it will start compiling our code and once it is done we will navigate to that url so i'm going to navigate to that url and this is our basic view scaffolding with view router and everything in place so let me quickly go to my project and let me open it up in full screen mode so that everything becomes clean. And now I'm going to install a couple of dependencies. So I'm going to say view add view Apollo. And this will take you again through the wizard within our integrated terminal. And this will, this will ask you some questions in order to set setup of preset for our view application. 
so let me quickly i think this is view and apollo so this will take a moment and it is looking for that view cli plugin apollo and yes it it has found and this will also take some time in order to bring in all the dependencies and create our project with view apollo features which are ready to be used basically it will be kind of a preset for our view application it will aut automatically modify our application to this so this might take a moment so i'm going to quickly pause the video and once it is back with our wizard to ask the questions we'll start doing that so now you can see our apollo has added like around 613 packages and it is successfully installed with this plugin and now it is asking to add some sample code so for our application we already have our own apollo server that we created in the previous playlist so for now i'm gonna go with no and also it is asking for add graphql api server so which also we do have our own so that we'll configure manually and also it is asking to configure apollo engine so with all the questions i'm gonna go with no and once i'm done with that you'll find this apollo config.js file has been created in the root of the project and this will again take some time in order to set up our view apollo file and you'll find this view apollo.js file has been created with this apollo config.js in the root and in our source directory we have view apollo js so this will take like a minute to finish it off it is done almost and once it is done we'll start implementing our bootstrap for styling as well as you installing our view bootstrap and now it is done so i quickly clear the terminal and i'm going to install npm i bootstrap as well as bootstrap view because i really hate using jquery in view project and bootstrap view library offers everything whatever you need without the dependency on jquery so this might take a moment and since we already have installed sas so in my asset directory i'm gonna create a folder called scss so for basic styling and theming and within that folder i'm gonna create a new file called main.scss and you'll find this our bootstrap is yet not done and meanwhile our apollo application view application is also running as usual there's no change so far but let it finish and once it is finished adding bootstrap as well as view bootstrap now we'll implement our view bootstrap in our application so bootstrap 4.5 bootstrap view 2.7 17.3 versions have been installed so in my main.scss directory i'm going to import the standard bootstrap from node modules which is three up and we'll get into the node modules we'll look for bootstrap and from that bootstrap we'll go to the folder called scss and here i'm interested in this bootstrap.sas file so once it is done now in my main.js file we'll bring this main.scss so let me quickly bring that import from assets scss directory we are looking for main.scss file and as i do this and we'll go to our this application and our application is still reloading and now you'll find this fonts have been changed with our standard bootstrap that we have implemented bootstrap library for the theming so with that all set let me go ahead and do some cleanup with our default code that we already have so in my about and home pages i'm gonna get rid of this default home component that we are getting here and there's a disclaimer this is not a view basics project so i'm not gonna go and explain each and everything from scratch we are going to do our apollo code here how we can do all sort of things so once i'm done now i'll find this our home page looks like this 
So in our home page, I'm also going to get rid of this image that we already have. And this is how we do it. And in our router, you will find this file. So there's a basic lot of markup that we already have here. Let me clear this. And instead of this relative path, I'm going to use alias, which is source directory, which the aggregate symbol that points to the source directory. And with that, we are done. So now with that all set, and also I'm going to go to my store directory, save it. This is our router. This is our views in our app dot view. I'm also going to get rid of this basic styling that we are getting by our view sample template code. So I'm going to get rid of that too. And as I save it, go to my application, you'll find everything is left aligned. And now it is our application. So first of all, I like to use in a camel cases way. If you want to go ahead with a traditional one, you can go with that too. But I like to do in a camel case way. So that's fine. Now I'm going to create a nav bar for our application later if I get time. So for now, we'll go with the basic nav bar that we get our get with our bootstrap dark one. So within a components, I'm going to create a new folder called layouts. And within that layouts, I'm going to create a new file called navbar.view. And within this layouts also, I'm going to create another file called footer.view. So these are two basic components that we are going to render inside our main application. So one will be our footer, other will be our navbar. Now it will be a lot of code to write template tag and script tags as well as our style tags. So what I'm trying to do here we have a plugin called Vitor, which helps in the rap for the de rapid development of view applications. Go ahead and look and install this plugin. And this will give you the basic scaffolding for view by writing this and press tab. And this will give you the scaffolding for that. For now, I'm going to get rid of that style tags from this. And this should return only one element. So app nav bar so within that i'm going to create a div with the app nav bar and same inside our footer div with the app footer id and also going to get rid of the style tag that we have and from our get bootstrap.com i'm going to bring in our basic standard nav bar that we get with our bootstrap. So one more thing, actually not from this one, I would like to go to bootstrap dot bootstrap view dot org. And from here, I'm going to bring in the standard nav bar with the bootstrap library. So for that, it will be very pretty much simple, straightforward. And we'll go to here look for the components we look for nav bar and this is our basic nav bar so since it should return at least one single only one element so i'm gonna do that and save it now as i do this nothing will happen because so far we haven't implemented our bootstrap view library and that we are going to do now so i'm gonna import from bootstrap view will bring in our bootstrap view and then we'll inject here inject into that application so we'll simply say view dot use bootstrap view i actually wanted to make this video with a view 3 version but since our bootstrap view component is yet not ready for view three and a lot of other packages are yet not ready for view three because it is a phase release. So that's why I'm going with third version or uh, second version 2.x version. And as, as I do do this and in my app root from this standard nav bar, and I'm going to create a script tag. 
script tag and here I'm gonna bring in our navbar from our source components and from that components we are going to look into the layouts the navbar then we have to bring in and then register inside that component so we'll simply say components and we'll register that navbar here and then we can of course just echo out in a simple tag self closing navbar and as i do this go to my application here you'll find our navbar is here so this is our standard navbar so for now let me make it dark one type is dark and variant should be dark that's fine and that's it so we have our dark navbar now I'm gonna completely get rid of these links that we have and the site form that is already given by this bootstrap so for that it's very simple and I'm gonna get into this navbar form given this drop down section and this navbar I'm gonna clear everything from inside then we have our links which is on navbar left I'm gonna bring in both of the links here let me get rid of this and let's save it so now we have these links on the on this side now it's time to go ahead and click uh, make our links with home connect our links with our home and about pages so it's very simple instead of this putting inside this part if you go ahead and right click on this inspect this element you'll find under the hood it is using standard bootstrap only so this is basically our nav bar and with that nav item so we can use that to here so li dot nav item and within that we'll give a router link oops router link And that's our tag it will go to home actually home will be this and we'll also give it a class of nav link so now with that you will find our router link is ready and we have look we are looking at the lot of errors in the console so that we are going to fig configure in the next video but for now this goes to our home page and similarly i'm gonna give it uh, give another link here called about and now we have two links click on here both the links are working so with that all set now it's time to go ahead and create two more links that will link later but for now one will be our login so it is login link then again copy and paste it this will go to the register and I want to add prefix of authentication so it will go to something like auth slash login and then auth slash register and that way we can do that too and once we are done then also I'm gonna give two more links so one should go to our dashboard later we'll protect this thing so dashboard profile then we have our uh, what do we call uh, just a second we'll call it our posts and it will go to our dashboard posts uh, actually it will become my post so basically on the home page we'll be rendering all the posts by all the users and under the dashboard section we'll see whatever the post what I have posted since our GraphQL API that we created in the previous video playlist was basically creating a post and then we protecting using access controls and a lot of other things now the third link which I'm gonna create related to the dashboard will be 
our logout link. So will be our logout and we'll put that too. With that all set, if I go to here, you'll find all the links are listed over here. So this these links will work on later to hide and protect based on the authentication state of the user. For now, it is okay. Now I'm going to create a footer, but before that, just a basic styling. So I'll simply say style and scope and we'll also pass our lang that is our scss so we are specifying vue.js that we are going to write some scss code inside our application now here inside this component so we have to specify that and this scope means like whatever the code i will inside whatever the style guide i'll in, uh, write inside this style tag is only limited to the scope of this component it cannot be shared outside and this also navbar brand should go to this view apollo and let me save it now you'll find a view apollo all the links are there but that's fine now let me quickly give a basic styling so i'll simply say if i right click under this one inspect this you'll find it's nothing but a nav bar within that nav element so i'm gonna cast that nav element and border bottom actually let let's not catch it here let's make it inside our global style sheet and i like to do a couple of things so in my assets says under this i'm gonna paste that two pixels solid dollar primary and with that i save it if i refresh And now we have a primary to five pixel solid color at the bottom. Let me make it five pixels so that it looks quite visible. And we have our primary book blue color at the bottom. Later we'll configure these theming, but for now that's not a very big thing to discuss right now. That's fine for us. And also I'm gonna give a basic styling. So dot btn dot comma dot form control and ball radius will be two pixels and that's important so we are going to override the default default buttons and those things borders so we are going to do that two pixels now it's time to go ahead and look for our footer component and that footer component is already we have created we just need to configure just a bit of things so since it is going to already be a, we can already use a footer tag and it will be a single element. We can use that too. And we'll give it a class of BG primary. And I'm also gonna use deflex. So then justify content. Content center and align items center and as i do this we have our footer and within this footer i'll give a p with a text white then also take font weight bold and font size will be larger and here inside that I'm gonna give a copyright symbol so for that and copy then we have a date so new date dot get full year function we'll call that and we'll get the current date and date copy code book inc I'm gonna write my name and now we'll bring in this component that we have created inside our main app template that we have so let me quickly say that import footer from components layouts footer and then we'll register that component footer and after the router view we'll say footer tag and as i do this now i'll find our footer here 
so this is this is not you are not able to feel any difference between but we can do that too by putting some margin or like a and here from the in the margin pt let me make two so everything is aligned center and now this looks quite nice so this is not doing much here and this footer is just a static and doing nothing now this router view i'm going to wrap it inside a container so i'm going to give a class of a container and whatever is inside the router view that will be wrapped inside the container then also i'm going to give it a class of this to this element that we have app main app element of d flex flex column so by default flex boxes apply to the rows but now here we are saying that it will be a d flex of column so we are just specifying that thing then and let me give it a, this container of padding y5 so on the y and x axis we have the padding of 5 and this app i'm going to catch and go to my main cache app and we'll give it a height of 100 vh and that should be important now you will find that nothing is happening so the way we can do that we'll go to our app we'll give it a class of flex grow one so this will take entire space and now as i do this you'll find our layout is ready so our app register and everything is there in the next video we'll start creating these login and register components and also configure our graphql sockets that we are a sockets error that we are getting as well as configure our default url and setting up our tokens and everything we'll do that in the next video and also just a theming so by the end of this video i wanted to i wanted to do it at last but i think this is the right time and this won't take much so that's fine for us so we can go simply into the node modules folder and we'll look for our bootstrap so here we have bootstrap library and inside the SAS, we'll look for this full file called underscore variables dot SAS. And I'm going to copy everything from here. Let me close it. Let me shrink it so that nothing is open. And let me shrink this node modules. And just above this import, will paste everything and also I want to give a body of a with a background color so just below this nav this body will become from my favorite site that's called htmlcolorcodes.com and we'll look pick a color for our background so I'm gonna use this this background looks nice so I'm gonna use this color that we have slightly grayish background that we have so we'll say background color we'll put that and we'll put it important so now you'll find that slightly grayish background and this default color which i want since it is a view apollo application so i would like to go with this color as a primary color or or we can go with the, this green color so basically it will tell that we are using any kind of view application and as i do this you'll find this blue color turns to this green color that we have and you can also look for all the all the colors and here we have a blue and that's it so this is basic theming and you can play around with the colors according to your needs of your theme but that's fine for us and we are not going to look much into that that's it so in the next video we'll start configuring our apollo engine as well as our apollo client that we have and also we'll start creating our routers routes for our this authentication states as well as a dashboard components so the next video is gonna be quite a long one but that's fine for us so thank you guys hope i see you in the next video